Now back to the news. More depressing for no, you. No, we got it. We got a, We got a fun story now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did someone get stabbed? Hey everybody, welcome back to Human Reaction, your weekly source for independent commentary on cultural news and politics, where it's always our mission to arm you with the tools you need to cut through media misdirection and resist the mono narrative. Today is a very special and historic day for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, we're going to be talking about this later. President Trump officially convicted on 34 counts. Very troubling for democracy, for justice in America. But on a lighter note, we reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube, guys. We're celebrating. Let's go. And we're going to pop some bottles to celebrate. To be clear. To be clear, this is for a thousand subs, not for Trump getting convicted, okay? Appropriate direction, cop. Don't hit me with that shit. Performance issues. Why? Oh, oh, oh. strong word. <laughs> so crack a bottle, let your body there you go. Don't act <laughs> like a snobby model. You just sit the bottle. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Woo. man. A lot of hard work. A lot of hours in this studio. And a lot of champagne all over this table. And also, if you haven't seen our latest episode that we did with Liam, it was, I think it was a banger. It was a we'll great episode. Put us over the top. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all the, you going out to the LNC and uh, getting all the footage and meeting all the people out there. Turns out was, actual reporting will be rewarded with yeah. more views. <laughs> you know, you love to see it actually, right? And yeah. and honestly, it was it was such a great time. It was fantastic to connect with a bunch of people who the toast, we had talked to and uh, talked about online forever. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We really, really appreciate you. Uh, we're glad to be here and we're going to continue to do what we do on behalf of you and all of us better understanding the world and have some fun doing it. Cheers. Fighting the goddamn mono narrative, media misdirection, all that jizzle jazzle. All that jizzle jazzle. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to come. <laughs> with, 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 with a thousand subs, we're going to change our motto to fighting that jizzle jazzle. <laughs> no, that comes at 10,000. Uh, okay, okay. Get us to 10,000 and we will change our motto. Danger zone. But we got some surprises coming up for celebration of this too and formatting of the show, things like that as well. Well, it might have already premiered. We might we might be putting it on this episode. Right? Oh, that's a good right? point. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> you might have seen it when you came in. Maybe you didn't. If we didn't, this part will be cut. It'll probably be next no, episode, whatever. to be honest. So, what's the benefit of having a thousand subscribers now? Uh, that means we get to bombard our viewers with uh, advertising and make tens of cents. Ha <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we're legit then. But the algo might like us better than too. I think I think that's kind of how it works because once our videos Over are making billion, YouTube, three hundred million, <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> yes, once our videos are making YouTube or any platform money, they want to promote us a little bit more. So hopefully that happens. We'll see. David, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, Trump was found guilty of thirty-four counts of being too based. Yo. <laughs> Biden, approves. <laughs> Biden approves another escalation of World War Three. That's not funny. That's just that's just that's sad. sad. Uh, Boston legalizes crime. Yeah. Ironically, <laughs> <laughs> white, very white, super white boy summer is here with a new hip song from Germany. Play it. And we'll get into what that means. <laughs> yeah. A little tease for you. And then lastly, for our OnlyFans slash subscribers, uh, we got Eric Prince and Ari Shafir. We're going to be talking about those two gentlemen. Separately, not, not yeah, together. Th their, their stories aren't mixed. No, but yeah. But yeah that's, it would that's be interesting if they, if they were. I mean, a little <laughs> teaser, there was a group chat that was leaked uh, with Eric Prince and a bunch of high-level figures talking about all sorts of things. Indeed. And, uh, we want to dig into that a little bit. Indeed. And Ari Shafir appearing on, what was it again? Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. It's kind of show. an interesting yeah. little clip that we, yeah. we'll throw in there as well. Very true. But before we get started, please do like, follow, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on YouTube. And leave us a review if you're listening somewhere else on the internet. Uh, we do appreciate it very much. And we thank our members who are supporting us with their subscriptions. If you would like to join those ranks, go to humanreactionpod.com to find out all the ways you can become a member and all the cool stuff that you get from that. Kyle. Uh, also join our Discord where it has been very raucous in there, especially with everything that was going on with the Libertarian Convention, the nominations, Trump being there, and just you and Liam being there as well and kind of giving us a, lo a lot of the inside dirt. It was very raucous in there over the last week. And we also have very dank memes like this one that uh, our, boy, our boy in there, Adam, uh, posted. 
honey, bring your boyfriend in here. They got him. They got Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you just listening, it's a very classic beta image of a man with a very patchy beard beta. and glasses and a bald head. Is the bald head a, a you know a, a beta uh, thing? David? No, come on. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, Andrew Tate is in the same category as you know. This guy. This guy's this guy. also trying to hold on to it. He's still got the side. Like he, oh, he true. He didn't go. He didn't commit. He didn't commit to to fully. <laughs> Bicking it. That's right. the only beta thing you can do. It's just like deny reality. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Which is, uh, so you didn't get selected for hair. If you are a small business owner looking for exponential growth, you have to connect with Adam Thune at Intellectual Patriots. He will revolutionize your business game and help you get to the next level. Adam can streamline your business practices and advertising strategies to improve your bottom line. His expertise in data engineering means he can build you the systems you need to collect and analyze market data. His mission is to provide you with invaluable insights to fuel your success. From grant writing and business proposals to digital systems integrations, even AI management, Intellectual Patriots is a one-stop shop for cutting-edge solutions. Don't wait another second. Visit intelpatriots.com to learn more. That's I-N-T-E-L patriots.com. This episode is brought to you by Revved Up Promo, the official apparel partner of Human Reaction. Revved Up is a premier full-service shop specializing in laser engraving, screen printing, and embroidery. Not only are they now making all of our apparel right down the road from us, they can do the same for your brand and ship it to you anywhere in the world. Revved Up helps you navigate the extensive universe of merch options and uses state-of-the-art techniques to showcase your brand in its very best light. So if you want to support our show and our generous sponsor, you can now do so by buying our merch and by turning to Revved Up promo for your own custom apparel needs. Reach them at revduppromo.com. That's with two V's and two P's, or just check the show notes for a link. <laughs> so I guess uh, let's get started in here. I, I'm sure most people have heard the news that uh, Donald Trump got uh, hit what? with 34 counts on this. <laughs> and uh, here is him walking out and what he has to say. So we'll uh, let him talk about it, and then we'll get into it a little bit. It was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA and the whole thing. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace and we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end, and we'll win. Because our country's gone to hell. We don't have the same country anymore. We have a divided mess. We're a nation in decline, serious decline. Millions and millions of people pouring into our country right now from prisons and from mental institutions, terrorists, and they're taking over our country. We have a country that's in big trouble, but this was a rigged decision right from day one with a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. And we will fight for our constitution. This is long from over. Thank you very much. I'm so fucking scared right now. You shut up. <laughs> he seems, I don't know, slow and not, ugh, you know, he didn't really have like a little, a lot of oomph to that talk. Right? I mean, do you think he was expecting to be? convicted on all 34 counts or any at all uh, I, i'm not surprised i convicted. think he was expecting it yeah, yeah. just like so? looking at the jury makeup and stuff i remember I, I i pulled up uh several months ago the jury makeup they were all asked about like where, where they the, get their news from I remember mm -hmm. and there was like one person that is in there would have any any type of slant towards trump in any meaningful way because you're, you're not going to get an unbiased jury and you know, right on this type of a case right? right and everybody else was like npr cnn you know mm -hmm. <laughs> right um, so a lot of the like partisan leftists are celebrating this, of course, and, you know, calling Trump the criminal they know he is right. Yeah, yeah. Despite the fact that there were all these, you know, really interesting inconsistencies and, and prejudices within the, the, the trial process and the judge and, you know, they wouldn't let them bring certain witnesses and all sorts of things. Uh, what, how, how is everybody else reacting? Uh, well, uh, 
I liked this one right here from Michael Malice. Uh, guys, prepare yourself. Hillary Clinton is about to drop the cuntiest passive aggressive tweet of all time. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, what happened here was, uh, oh, God, it's worse than I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> For those just listening, Hillary Clinton tweets nudes in bio. <laughs> Michael Malice, oh God, is worse than I ever dared to fear. <laughs> uh, Babylon B says uh, Hillary Clinton condemns Trump for paying hush money to political liabilities instead of just killing them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have been a lot cleaner for him, actually. This morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> today was our George Floyd moment. <laughs> Trump with cornrows. <laughs> oh, yes. Terrible okay. Would look better if he did that, honestly. I think it's he should true. go bald and, and grow a beard. I think it would I think go over well. I, I did see somebody did an AI generated image of Trump with a beard and I was like, yeah, that's a powerful man right yeah, there. Yeah, there. <laughs> bald with a well. beard. Yeah, yeah it that'd was be super solid. based. But in general, people don't trust people with beards or bald people. So so we're really Thanks. firing I, on all, sorry, on all I'm, cylinders. Well, that's here. why we have you guys on the podcast. It was just me. It'd be well, doing terrible. We We'd never have beards, beards and bearded you're bald. right now. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, you're you're bald, we're bearded. <laughs> Is that? I'm also bearded. Highly <laughs> untrustworthy. Uh, stubble. <laughs> can we get someone to print a, a really negative review of this show? If, if, if any media are watching, can we get just like a really scathing review? Like highly untrustworthy, knows nothing at all, like one star out of five. That's just our yeah. TikTok comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you're that's right. a good point. Uh, yeah, so, so I guess to, to kind of cover the broad basics of this story, you have a uh, the the essence of it is that Trump covered up the fact that he paid hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels, um, disguising the payment as a legal fee to his lawyer Michael Cohen. And what all thirty four of these counts uh, are is they're they're all some sort of like falsified fraudulent documents in relation to that. Uh, it comes down to invoices for legal services, checks paid for legal services, and ledger entries for legal expenses. And the the basics of this is here is the problem is that he did not use campaign funds for this that is what the essence of the trial is right so if if okay hold on a second let me just ask this question just to make sure everyone's got it right in their heads if you're running for office and you want to bang a porn star i pay her off and and then and then make sure she doesn't say anything so you pay her off you have her sign an nda and part of the nda means you award her how much money it was like $130,000. Yeah. 130. Like wow. Jeez. High, high, high dollar hoe right there. Um, <laughs> so she, so you pay her $130,000. She signs the NDA and then she decides. And then, and then she, and then she says, also wrote a book about it. She writes a book about <laughs> it. And then the New York DA says, Oh, we can't find this expense in your released reports from your campaign. Yeah. So then you get a, permission to go through Trump organization uh, via probably a warrant signed by a judge and then find these payments to his lawyer that are the same amount as the total payments that would have been, was promised to Stormy Daniels in our book. And then you find out, okay, so he made this payment through his lawyer yeah, and that's not Charge the way you're the supposed to do that. it. Yeah. Yeah. When you're going to wow. try to shut somebody up, you have to do it wow. publicly and accurately, yep. correctly. Yep, that's exactly right. It, right. Well, and, and the the big thing here is, um, I, I pulled up an old clip from two weeks ago of Vivek on uh, Patrick Bet David's podcast where they were talking about the trial. And one of the major points that Vivek here has is just what if it was in reverse? Like, what if he used campaign funds to pay her off? Yeah. Do you think that the trial would still be happening? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and here, oh, let's let's play that clip here because I, I I think that's a very reasonable thing. Like, would this still be happening? And I think that's a question that people should ask themselves. I will say that every day this trial proceeds, the trend that I've seen, I didn't follow today's, but up to today, all we've seen is one more layer of the onion of how the whole thing's a charade, right? If you think about this, Imagine if a good way to imagine whether something's a politicized prosecution mm. is right because everyone's going to be you know MSNBC has their histrionic points and then they would look at people who are defenders of Trump like myself as being partisans on the other side. Here's a good litmus test, okay? If the prosecution's theory of the case said you did something wrong, uh-huh. what if you had done the exact opposite thing? Okay, okay, let's so let's play that out. Sure. Th- then that should mean you did not do something wrong, right? Let's let's try that on this set of facts. 
On this set of facts, the basic theory of the case is the prosecution says, in order for them to charge this as a felony, that Donald Trump's payment to Stormy Daniels should have been recorded as a campaign contribution. That's the heart of the case. Without that, they couldn't charge this as a felony. Mm-hmm. It would only be a misdemeanor that's outlived the statute of limitations. The falsifying business records is outside the statute of limitations. It's a misdemeanor, not a felony. The only basis for this being a felony is if there's a different underlying crime, which what they allege is that he made effectively a campaign contribution without it being recorded as such. So now apply my test. If the prosecution says that's the thing you did and it's wrong, imagine you did the exact opposite. What would the exact opposite be? The exact opposite would be Donald Trump using campaign funds to make a personal hush money payment. In that scenario, I have no doubt these people would be going after him and they would have a much stronger case in that scenario. So now think about it. If he did thing wow. A, right? He's just got to break yeah, this stuff down. He did thing A, and you said that's wrong. Let's say he did the exact opposite of thing A and did thing B, and you would have an even stronger case for him. Then that means you were going to get him no matter what. So that is the proof that this is a politicized persecution through prosecution. I think everybody kind of knows it in their what bones, but you got to just see it. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Literally, they're going to get him going or get him coming. And that, I think, is the airtight proof that this thing is a sham. I'm going to come. It's been a sham since day one. (laughs) What do you guys think about that? I think it's a very interesting perspective to look at. And I think it just it does illustrate the point that, hey, you know, if it wasn't this case, it was every other case that they brought. However many there are now, five, six. They were going to try to get him on something and they finally got one to stick. And it's also that Trump himself is a very flawed person and candidate. And, you know, perhaps the Republicans shouldn't nominate a guy who sleeps with porn stars and pays the money yeah and, and that's totally How granted dare you? but to be honest like are there no other Who political <laughs> uh, political figures that have done these things well, in fact we have another link we can bring up about a uh, about taxpayer dollars being spent on hush money payments in congress do we not thomas Manny, massey highlighted this that a, a can a, a fund in congress specifically to pay uh sexual harassment supplements. okay so thomas massey tweets here congressman paid 17 million dollars of taxpayer money for undisclosed hush money payments to cover up sexual harassment claims meanwhile candidate trump allegedly uses his money for a hundred and thirty thousand dollar hush money payment and he's convicted of 34 felonies for not disclosing so i mean obviously it just shows it's not political. Well, it's well, not political at all. Well, and and to go a little bit deeper into this too is like we're talking uh, Congress and staffers uh, with sexual harassment cases, all sorts of discriminatory discriminatory cases, and all this, and that's not actually coming out of their office funds or anything like that. Like it is just straight coming out of a budget that has been set aside and like was put into law back in 1995. Like there's a part of the budget because that, we're like, we, gets, we know these guys are going to screw yeah. up. <laughs> we just got to put some money <laughs> the over best here. Part just about in it, case. Is this from the Congressional Accountability Act <laughs> yeah. of 1995? It's like the Patriot Act, right? It's just like they have to name everything in the most disgusting way it's possible. The, the yeah. And, and this, story, this story actually comes back Come from, on, uh, uh, it's, it goes back to 2017. This was in the uh, Paul Ryan house when he was speaker. And so like, this is actually an old story. Mm-hmm. Who knows where this is at now? I, I haven't looked at the numbers, right? But, um, but w- what do you guys think that this actually kind of, th- what do you guys think about how this affects Trump in the long run when it comes to the campaign? Cause we have looked at the amount of donations that have flooded through. Has yeah. Been- so it was amazing. I, I, the, the Trump campaign, I think raised the latest figure I've seen is 39 Over million. million. Shut the fuck up, Joe. Thirty-nine million dollars raised yesterday to the Trump campaign with uh, with really like high-profile donations coming through from the likes of Andrew Tate and uh, you know uh, one of the principals at Sequoia Capital who had a whole write-up about it much well, it, more yeah. eloquently than uh, than Andrew Tate. Yeah, it's Sean say. McGuire. He was somebody that he left. Uh, Google, I think, was it Google because of a bunch of DEI practices and stuff like that. Yeah, like, now he's a venture. He capitalist. wasn't able to get. He he was told to his face that he couldn't get promoted because he was white. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, so he and he so he's he's like a guy that traditionally Democrat, right? And now he's donating a bunch of money to Trump after this. And and mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of that just on Twitter. Yeah. Like I'm seeing a ton of these kind of big Democrat types who had a lot of TDS back in the 2016 era that are just like. I got to support Trump at this point. Yeah. Like I just got it. Right. And, and, and to be clear, like, I mean, this guy wrote a very thorough explanation of why he believes what he does. And I certainly don't believe or agree with everything that he says in here. Cause he, you know, he goes into a lot of stuff, you know, around, uh, around Israel and Gaza and that sort of thing. 
Um, you know, he, he seems like very sort of establishment uniparty views, but interesting, uh, nevertheless, that he has made this this shift in in mindset after watching the the cases that have come forward and how they all seem to be incredibly incredibly trumped up. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> trumped up. Andrew Tate had i think the winning tweet on this whole thing read it <laughs> Please. Uh, who's gonna read it <laughs> andrew tate says that he's <laughs> <Don't read it>. <laughs> <laughs> andrew tate says uh, that he's donating 200k to my uh my black friend trump <laughs> um, <laughs> which very appropriately got community noted uh, uh donald trump is a white man <laughs> donald trump is in fact a white man Oh, that, that that community note didn't actually make it. That was like a for approval type right. of thing. Like people that are approved community noters, uh, they had the option of like, is this helpful or not? And I voted it never it was helpful. It. We yeah. need more. We need more votes in, in favor of that uh, one because that's 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 choice. Yeah. But all uh, right. But it seems like like when we're just looking at it, the the groundswell right now, the, the amount of people just even just in my own personal life that are people that would not net normally vote for Trump like have actively told me I'm voting for Trump elected in this yeah. election. And I have to imagine that's I'm know, one of them extrapolate that. Yeah. Ben is one of them, right? <laughs> We're still a long ways from November. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things have changed between now and November. Number one, number two, um, there are way more people who are just going to be seeing a campaign ad in the fall that says he's serving time right now. Yep. Then there are people who are going to watch the news and see this. So the calculation Do you think though you don't think the maga contingent is just like up in arms right now oh they totally are i mean but if, that's if a you're support on, base if you're right? on twitter right now it's a different story than if you're just like a normie watching cnn right yeah. true and, and, and like, but how many normies it's, watch it's cnn it's easy to it's no, actually not it's, it's not like even million. cnn watchers MS, right MS, we're MS talking easy, about yeah, like, the yeah. hundreds of millions of people who don't even pay attention States, who don't even watch the news any news at all they're not on twitter Maybe they're on Facebook and they just know that Trump is a bad guy because he's been indicted 16 times yeah. and now he's finally convicted of yeah, something. Yeah, and they'll have the mug shot and they'll have like the picture of him going into jail and all that kind of stuff. Well, and a lot of this, like this is why democracy sucks, right? Is because you have a certain contingent of the country that actually pays some sort of relative attention and they all have their like vibes on what's going on some way more than other that actually kind of like go into the weeds of it. Like, you know, we go into the weeds of a lot of this stuff, but like, that's those are the people that we see on Twitter, right? You know, it's it's not necessarily the the normal people. And yeah, but we, I, we, I it's do, hard to gauge where they're at. I do I do think though that this is probably going to only continue the trend of of the indictments and the different things coming down against Trump, helping him in in his polling numbers. I mean, particularly we've seen growth amongst like African American communities who who have felt wronged by the justice system, feel like like that he's more relatable now not to mention the fact that they were better off in his economy than they have been under joe biden and they feel completely you know distanced from joe biden because he hasn't done anything to help regular americans meanwhile yeah. letting people across the border well, and all the rest of it you're not black if you don't vote for joe well yeah of course obviously <laughs> well, we I, I, i've the polling that i've seen around this too suggests that nobody's really changing their votes over this um yet well well it, but that also means like in the inverse it, uh, like sure no uh, one's no like one's it, abandoning it's kind of like if you were already anti-trump you're still anti-trump and if you're mm -hmm. pro-trump you're probably just more pro-trump right that's that's kind of where it is but then i'm also seeing a lot of democrat types that have had a lot of tds over the years um trump derangement syndrome that uh they're they're actually using this as a as a means of criticizing Biden in their own camp and just be like, see, you can't even beat the guy that got hit with thirty four charges, <laughs> you know, like that type of stuff too. Right. Like, yeah. and they're people that would never vote for Trump, but they're they're kind of mad at Biden of like, it's time for the Democrats to get a better candidate. I'm seeing a lot yeah. of that type of stuff as mm -hmm. well. Well, and I mean, it, yeah, you and you are seeing that too. I mean, Biden held a rally, if you can call it that, in um, he goes outside Philly, I believe, like yesterday or the day before. Uh, for like 50 people or like 100 people. Meanwhile, Trump is pulling rallies of like 100,000 people and 25,000 people and 30,000 people like in Brooklyn and like, you know, New York where he's not typically, I mean, Republicans don't typically pull well in New York, not particularly in, in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah maybe in the, the more in the rural areas, but it's not looking good. Like if, you, if you're seeing inside of what's happening from the campaign level, it's completely lopsided in Trump's favor right now, despite this. Yeah. Well, and there's also because Dave, you made a comment of uh, maybe you shouldn't uh, nominate a candidate who bangs a porn star. I actually don't think that matters at all in anybody's calculus here. <laughs> like, well, I, I, I think it does for the never Trumper yeah. Republican right. That's this is this is just another example of that. But uh, on the other side of it, like once again, 
there was a there's a lot of well, I don't care about his personal life sort of thing. It doesn't affect anything that was said of him in 2016 and 2015, way back in the day. And a lot of people were like, hey, well, we kind of set a standard a long time ago that your personal life does matter on these issues of leadership. It should, for well, sure. That's what they made that argument for two decades on. So, and then they abandoned it for power, and now they're paying a cost for that. And that's just the I, cost. Well, this is the thing is I, I don't think the cost. It, it seems to me that this is much more of an energizing factor than it is anything else. So like, like well, I, I think that's a standard that's being set that I don't actually think is making sense for the actual reality of the situation right now. Like it just doesn't seem like, cause like the never Trumpers are going to be never Trumpers, no matter what happened with that. Like, it doesn't matter if his moral character is too low. Like, I mean, all of these politicians, their moral character is too low, usually, right? No, I, sure, I, right? There's many ways in which I agree with you. All I'm uh, saying is that this is the, just is this the cost of that calculus at the end of the day. And the calculus isn't played on the Republican right in the primary, obviously not. It's paid in the general election when it comes to regular everyday people who want somebody that actually could, they could look up to. Just the fact that they're going, even if they get past the fact that he served time and they already served time for, it's for paying hush money to a porn star for sleeping with her. In which case, isn't exactly the fine of values that the Republican Party runs on and then is successful with. Quite true. So, quite traditionally. True. So, I don't, I don't know what the case is going to be. But what does Gen Z think of it? Are they like... Space does, does anybody know? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know where, I, I mean, it, it seems like... <laughs> they don't vote. Seen, That's well, part. it seems to me like, that young folks are trending more towards the right than they typically do at this point in time. Like, it's, it's not like it's an overwhelming trend, but it seems like the... There's in the same way that like Trump is courting more black vote and more Latino vote than Republicans of the past. Like, it's not like he's getting the majority, but it's this that trend seems to exist with Gen Zers as well. Wasn't mm-hmm. there a recent article or study about how more young men are going right and yes. the women are staying? That is that's true. Well, Ooh, that's actually the, the big thing right there. Yeah. Well, and, they were already left, so that's why. So, yeah, they're, they're really staying. Well, you went all, you'll also the suburban mom vote too is also a big deal, and and yep. they're going to be the ones that are the um, Karens. Yeah, the, the Karens of the world are going to be the ones that are most disgusted by the uh, immoral behavior as portrayed by you know. Right. right. How dare Fair you? Fair point. Fair There's point. also yeah, ABC poll, CNN, CNN dash SSRS all put uh, existing Trump supporters about 24 to 25% of existing identified self-identified Trump supporters were willing to might reconsider the support from if he was convicted. This was polling before the actual thing. So it's always difficult. Most people, when you give them a hypothetical of a future future state there, that's much less reliable than their demonstrated behavior. But that is one of the, one of the reasons why I think they would see that 25% losing any about 25% out of a coalition is a big deal. So will it actually have that effect? I don't think so. I think they're misreading it. Yeah. I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see because like there, and it is one of these things where I, I know I, I think I saw Elon Musk retweeted this was uh, just showcasing the one thing after another. It's like, okay, 100, 100 grand hit here, 200 grand hit here, three, you know, and, and it's just like with all of these different things that keep piling up and they're trying to make some sort of uh they're just trying to keep like death by a thousand cuts type of type of deal with trump right now for sure Um, wasn't there the what was it like 313 million dollar real estate thing that he got had to pay like a year ago or something well it was it was was more recently and it was was more money than that i believe it was when the shark tank guy freaked out he's like no one's gonna do business no it was um, O'Leary. Uh, O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. Uh, th- so that was the that was the the real estate deal. They yeah. said uh, you know he had engaged in real estate fraud. I don't remember because the exact he charge. His because he was overvalued more. his property, right? Allegedly, according to the court, which was obviously very biased against him. Um, but that's also very common practice in real estate. Well, but the other thing here is that there was no crime there, yeah. right? Like all of the banks got paid back with interest. Everyone was made whole, and no one was harmed. Yeah, he, yeah. Kevin O'Leary was like, "This is a victimless crime." Correct. Crime. A very libertarian using, perspective, Kevin I know, O'Leary. I, don't have a camera, I do appreciate but I'm using that. Using air quotes on crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and that's that's the problem with a lot of this stuff is like, if you do the lightest amount of scratching beneath the surface, you understand that, like, okay, this is just purely politically motivated. There's nothing behind this other than just How pure dare animus. You? And it's it, it's just the Biden administration just doing whatever they can to damage their primary political rival. And as you tweeted the other day, you know, b- b- we live in a banana republic, mm-hmm. and it's certainly more bananas than republic at this point. <laughs> Which is what you tweeted. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and 
it is also like campaign finance violations are a very easy way of just like hitting the people that go against the regime in any in any sense. Like I remember when uh, when Dinesh D'Souza went to jail, and that was just because. I mean, like he, he did do something illegal, but it's it's one of these things where the crime in itself was he donated he did a max donation and then he gave money to a friend to do a max donation to like a, to a Senate campaign. Mm. Uh, so it was, and and that paper trail I guess was tracked, and so they saw oh he went over the limit and he just used a surrogate as his max donation on something and then he went to jail for it. Wow, he was actually supposed to be at an event here in Montana and I and I, I was going to get a chance to meet him. This this was like year like a decade ago when that happened and uh, it was literally like the night before he was supposed to be here in Montana is when he got he went to jail. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh. Dang, but it's just a campaign finance violations are one of those things, right? It, yeah, it, it's it's a really easy way to hit your political opponents for sure. This has always been one of the big controversies around campaign and other kind of speech regulations around money and politics uh, is that's one of the best ways to control politics itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's always the the cost of the folks who are, oh, we got to get money out of politics type folks is they're very rarely actually calculating how this actually plays out because for the most part, these are played out in ways to game the political, the political game um, unless you actually do ban things like speech. Well, we'll see if Trump is able to John Cena his way through this this new chapter. 1776 will commence again. <laughs> this new dark day in American democracy. <sighs> if you can call it that. All right, um, let's move on. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Zesty Beverages. They're on a mission to un the standard American diet by crafting drinks with fewer calories and more nutrients from real food. Their lineup of delicious offerings now includes Electric Peak Yerba Mate, postbiotic sodas, keto-friendly, ready-to-drink margaritas, and hard teas. Wondering what a postbiotic soda is? Well, head on over to ZestyBev.com to learn more and find a retailer near you. Once again, check them out online at ZestyBev.com. That's Z-E-S-T-Y-B-E-V.com. Something that very undemocratic happened. Without telling a soul, not a soul, the Biden administration approved the U.S. weapons uh, to be used in Ukraine against targets within Russia. We have a CBS summary of the story that gives you some nice B-roll along with it and a, and a very news reporting type person saying it. So it seems like it's way more legit that way. So Tonight, good. CBS News has learned that President Biden has quietly given the go ahead for Ukraine to launch limited airstrikes with U.S. weapons inside Russia. Ukraine may use the weapons on the Russian side of the border near the besieged Ukrainian city of Kharkiv against concentrations of Russian troops, artillery and planes. This is a reversal of the president's previous ban on such actions, and it could escalate tensions with the Kremlin. Tonight, CBS News has learned that President Biden has quietly... Can we just recap really quickly uh, all of the lines in the sand that have been drawn through the course of the Ukrainian conflict with Russia? All right. First, we weren't going to do tanks, and then, and then you know, and it was and it was defensive weapons only. Yeah, yeah, yeah defensive, defensive weapons. weapons. Well, it was defensive weapons for a long time. Yeah, and it was like defensive weapons. I was like, oh yeah, like body armor. I was like, no, like M16s. Like what are you talking about? It's a totally defensive weapon. That's a super defensive <laughs> weapon. It just depends on who you're shooting at at the time, <laughs> right. and, and if they shot at you first, right? <laughs> And then, it, uh, and then it was okay. We're actually we'll do tanks. Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, okay. we'll do tanks, but no F-16s. Yeah, no jets. Period. And then jets happen. And then we for sure did jets. <laughs> and now it's I wish like you weren't a liar. <laughs> and then missiles. And now it's missiles. Yeah. So how soon? And what's the over under on boots on the ground? Well, U.S. Boots on, the boots, ground. boots on the ground. That's the general irony, right? general. The infantry New York Times uh, put out this article that was pretty much about how the entire intelligence apparatus operation of Ukraine was done by the CIA. And so that means that the that the things like the assassination of and Alexander Dugan's daughter was blamed on the Ukrainians, but it's actually probably us, the US. By but we're talking like special operators, Yikes. you know, limited limited forces, right? You know, and and also the intelligence apparatus, not general you know infantry but yes but, but there are movements within like the rest of the european union I, isn't france putting together a coalition and they're sort of starting to promise they've their said own that, they're, that, that they're willing to put troops on the ground i don't know if they're actually have promised to that would be a very different sort they're, of thing. They're, they're moving in that direction i don't know that there's a promise on the table about it right there's been a lot of there's saber rattling around this but there's a huge difference between these things and this Big next difference. step of escalation is the thing that's not being covered underneath the trump news 
right? Like, I mean, it's, it's obviously covered a little bit, but yeah. like no one's really paying attention to it at this point because Trump is, has been convicted. Right. And I, I think some people might um, see this as a non-story because of the other attacks that have happened in Russia. Like we've covered, for example, last year when they took like a drone and they flew it in, they tried to blow up the Kremlin, the Kremlin. Mm-hmm. Um, they attacked the bridge. Yeah, they did. Uh, in they Crimea. Did, right. Uh, so these sorts of other stories, what they don't draw the distinction of is how important it is to use specific U.S. weapons. In this case, the missile systems that ended the START Treaty in the first place. Interesting. Dig yeah. in on that a little bit. Okay, so the START Treaty was a treaty that was signed by Ronald Reagan to say we're not going to put medium-range missiles into Europe. Signed on both sides. Bush administration, because Condoleezza Rice is a huge Russia hawk, educated by Cold War warriors, the worst kinds and in elite institutions uh, that basically said, oh, we're, we're at a civilizational forever war with Russia. We just don't know it, right? <laughs> Functionally. Uh, and so she came in and then said, oh, well, they, they are, you know, we want to, in order to keep Iran from nuking Munich, we have to put in defensive missiles into Europe. And so then we're going to tear up the START Treaty. And then Russia said, like, don't do that. And then we're like, yeah, we're going to do it. And then, you know, and then they also accused Russia of not obeying the treaty, too, and like some bullshit back and forth and things like that. And that's what probably started the hypersonic missile um, technology development in Russia that they're currently utilizing today. So really what this means is we're just one step closer to World War Three, mm, potentially. Right. Or, or a nuclear exchange between the West and Russia. Like I said, World War Three. No, no, there is no. That's not a World War Three. That's the that's end of world. Yeah, that's, well, that's that's that's. Uh, I don't. It's a famous Albert Einstein quote. I don't know how World War Three would be fought, but I know how that World War Four, four World War Four will be fought. It'll be with sticks with and stones. Sticks and stones. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, really upbeat story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's. <laughs> Shall we remind you? Keeping the eye. We got a thousand it. subs on YouTube. <laughs> you guys want to pop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going. Yeah. Okay, now back to the news. More depressing for no, you. No, we got it. We got a, We got a fun story now. Oh yeah, yeah. Did someone get stabbed? Boston's mayor. Oh, oh. <laughs> are we gonna do that? Yeah, it's, it's not fun. Boston. Bennett, it's not fun. go off, Queen. Well, well, okay. What, what's going on first? Like, tee, tee it up. What, what is happening here in Boston? Okay, right so, well, Bennett and I were, were hanging out last night looking for our third story because it was, you know, other than the Trump situation, it was maybe it's a little bit slower. Newsweek, and I was cruising through Zero Hedge, and I saw that Boston Mayor millennial 39 year old michelle Wu had the really brilliant idea to follow in the in the footsteps of the vibrant liberal strongholds of the west coast they're seattle do, they're doing Portland, very well right san now. francisco los angeles and do something really bold and forward thinking decriminalizing crime <laughs> just just a really wonderful idea and, and some of the things we're talking about here uh we, we've got a list is, that the, that, is will, that the actual words that were used? <laughs> no, that's, that's maybe my snarky take on it. But, but decriminalizing uh, or, or sort of uh, declining to prosecute. Yeah, it's a do not prosecute list. Particular yeah. charges. Charges of things like trespassing, shoplifting or, or larceny, which is, is basically just like petty theft. Um, disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace, receiving stolen property. So being someone to uh, buy something that is, that, that, that's hot, right? Um Minor driving offenses, including operating with a suspended or revoked license, which that one I'm sort of like, well, yeah. driver's licensing is kind of bullshit anyway. So yeah. if you good for you down. There is a list on that article, but then we've got things like breaking and entering, uh, particularly where it is into a vacant property or where it is for the purpose of sleeping or seeking refuge from the cold. And there is no actual damage to the property. So, so basically just like legalizing squatting. Yeah, yeah this is, right. that's a big issue for me, especially because I do own real estate in Massachusetts still. And it's just like, I've seen a lot of the stuff on, you know, I don't have TikTok, but like Instagram of, there was, we've talked about on the, the, uh, the guy who came in and was like telling his followers how to oh, use yeah. water. Mm-hmm. Yep. And mm-hmm. yeah. South American uh, migrant who's like sort of a TikTok influencer saying, yeah. here's how to basically become a property owner in the U S <laughs> by just moving into a property that you don't own and just inhabiting it. Um, a standalone yeah. resisting arrest. Correct. Correct. Um, you know, and, and there's other things in here, like some of them that are like, I, that I would actually think we would agree with like drug possession. Um, pretty solid drug possession with intent to distribute standalone resisting arrest, meaning there's no other charge involved. It's just resisting arrest 
or a resisting arrest charge combined with only charges that are also on this list of charges that will be declined to prosecute. So if you did like every single one of these things, are you, are you, not you could, you could, you could trespass, <laughs> steal something, sell it to someone else, be really rowdy and disturb the peace at the same time while driving with a suspended license, destroy some property along the way, threaten someone, um, also be a minor in possession of alcohol and drugs, perhaps with the intent to sell them <laughs> and resist arrest and still get off scot-free. I do agree with threats because I mean, that's just like, you could get that walking down the street. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's just a Northeast thing. Well, it's just, the, it's just the, the, big, the big things in here are like, yeah, just blatant property violations, right? Like malicious destruction of property or trespassing, like those types of things. Like those are just important things to have on the books just to have your civilization in order, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's, again, I, I don't understand why you look at the other cities she uses as an example and be like, this sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. Things yeah, are going San great Francisco, in LA right now. Yeah, killing what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> You know, being a refugee from the greater Seattle area for the better part of two decades, I will say not killing it. The last time I was in Seattle, interestingly, to see Jordan Peterson speak, Mm. I was walking through like the really nice convention center district and the guy just crosses the street right in front of us and then just whips it out and starts pissing into the vestibule of a doorway of a business that's closed. Yeah, that was crazy. I haven't been to Seattle for a few years, but just like three, four years ago, last time I was there, uh, just just being on the interstate and just seeing all of the tents just lined up around the interstate. Like it's, yeah. it's just like, wow, this city has gone down downhill. Yeah. I would not want to live here. At well, all. And, and the little trick here is like, it's just, it's this trying to solve a problem, the wrong direction. Right. So like the way to solve the problem of, you know, crime, it might not be to incarcerate everybody. Okay, fine. There might be other ways to go about solving the problem of homelessness. Right. And then just incarcerating all of them that, that doesn't solve every problem. But it, 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 this is just the wrong solution, the wrong direction. Absolutely, if you're saying, "Oh, well, you can just steal up to 250 bucks worth of goods." So can I do that for like, no consequence? What if I do that like a hundred times? Is that still yeah? Cool? Like that's just, still fine. Just it's, don't do it more than that amount at a time. Yeah, you right, probably so you probably this, want it like like 250 from each person. It would, probably, it would probably, <laughs> so, yeah. but it would probably then be, be different cases. If <laughs> if you gave a voucher. Anytime I to anyone who wanted shopping. it for 250 bucks, yeah. that would be cheaper than allowing the theft of larceny up under 250 bucks, right? I mean, think about it. You would pay for it in inflation. You'd pay for it in government debt. You'd pay for it in oh, municipal yeah. bond problems. But you wouldn't pay for it in businesses leaving your city because they can't afford to stay open. Correct. Yeah, like and the, the what is it, Target in San Francisco? Where uh, just like Walgreens, Target, pretty much any major is department behind store. Behind glass. Everything's now. behind bars or glass. Yeah. Well, and you have to have an employee come and unlock the case for you to get things out. Which Sorry, is, I'm not which is gonna just, just benefit thinking. Amazon. Right, that's gonna it's gonna blow oh, exactly. up online distributors. Right? Exactly. Well, I remember last year, places like Walmart, uh, they just pulled out of like all the major West Coast cities. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And, and the reason being is there's so much theft that it's hurting the bottom line. Like we're, we're not making a profit in these stores in major metropolitan areas along the West Coast. Yep. And like, just if you think about. There's probably also other things like they probably can't have the accurate security that they need because there's a monopoly on security that exists. And there's probably all these things like they so they can't even like protect their stores from getting stolen from. Yeah. But it's just like that is wild. Like we're supposed to be the pinnacle of civilization here in America and our major franchises cannot operate because of theft. Oh, it's worse than that. Most corporations have policy that employees of the corporation cannot enforce anti-theft. Yeah. Even where theft is illegal. Right, because right. they can't the pursue someone outside the store. They can't stop yeah. someone from leaving the store with stolen merchandise. Which they is can't bullshit. do anything about it. Which is bullshit. They should. They, if if you go into the store and start stealing, the get, employees of the store should be RNC. able to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. uh, that's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu code for rear naked choke. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give them the RNC, David. Yeah. Send we we need the, you standing at the, the front conference. of a Walgreens in San Francisco. I don't want to choke anybody. That's not. That's, that's, That'd that's, be great content, though. Yeah, <laughs> David with like a body cam, just standing outside of a CVS, just ready Waiting to take somebody to, down. Well, well, and, and, and it makes you wonder, like, why are people going, and, and and not just in America, but like other countries as well? Why are people constantly going towards the law and order candidate? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're all like, oh, these there's these right wing authoritarians that are taking all over all these countries. It was like, well, this is because this is what is happening in those other countries. Yeah. Which right. is blatant crime 
theft and property violations and all this stuff, and then people just want some semblance of order. You right? want a Bukele? This is how you get a Bukele. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it's like, oh, and, and then people here in America, they're looking at what's happening with Trump, who's like the law and order candidate, you know, in a, in a lot of senses, right? And they're just like, oh, and they're trying to throw him in jail because of like kind of nonsense charges. Yeah, he must be doing something <laughs> right, because right. right. look at what their policies right. are. You can seal up to 250 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could disturb the peace, and you could do breaking and entering, but God damn it, if you miscategorize your <laughs> prostitution <son. laughs> payments, you're going to jail for 140 years. Well, well, that, and that's actually something we didn't even mention when we were covering that story was each one of those counts could have up to four years each. Right. And so we're talking about a man in his 70s getting 136 years potentially. Potentially. <laughs> oh, something else we didn't even mention in that story too yeah. is the sentencing is going to be happening the Friday before the, the RNC, before the convention. The yeah, timing right. of this stuff has been has been the most telling part, right? Like, yeah, okay, yeah, you can in- infer that it's it's politically Don't motivated the whole time. Don't be suspicious. But also, uh, you know, wasn't the uh, the arraignment date for one of his trials like the day before Super Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. something of that nature. Like, and you start to be like, okay, and you know, and you know what they're <laughs> going to try to do is is put him in jail for the rest of the election season, right? while they're waiting for a, an appeal or something like that. Like maybe, maybe he doesn't get any jail time after that, but he, but they're going to try to just like lock him up. He's still under the gag order, I believe until sentencing. So that's going to at least extend the time that he, he can't, uh, you know, be campaigning and be out talking to people or, or talking about the trials. It's just, it's ridiculous. So well, one, it, at least one part of it here too, that we need to tease to, maybe we can come back to it yeah. is to get to the, what you said earlier, Joe, like some of these aren't bad in concept, and teasing out why they're different from the ones that are. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I mean, yeah, so I guess having just been at the LNC and steeping myself in, uh, you know, libertarian principles, like libertarians believe in non-aggression, property rights, and self-ownership, right? Like those are kind of the three like pillars. So if you look at these things, these these different crimes that are being decriminalized through that lens, trespassing would be a property crime someone else owns that property you know you can't just go on it without their permission shoplifting easy someone else owns that property you can't just take it without their permission same with larceny people joe it's not just corporations they pay insurance for that so it's not theft because they pay insurance those are the two arguments i hear you're full of shit i just uh, (laughs) i just just scrolled down and there's a picture record show boston mayor michelle Wu used her own campaign funds to pay for the elects electeds of color holiday party and i'm like what if she miscategorized that oh she go to jail forever well she's probably got a better lawyer than trump <laughs> so, one one that isn't uh you know that actually not? a uh, a liar or or perjure. one that probably is a sort of yeah. <laughs> 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 the, pro- uh, the problem but, with the problem with those two ideas is that no corporations are collectively owned property of individuals and so theft from them is still theft from well, sure and we're not just talking about corporations we're talking about mom and pop stores we're talking about individual no, small all business all that matters is corporations <laughs> they're the only ones who've been theft for don't, don't make don't me you use this. <laughs> no you're right and then and then as far as the insurance uh, just because i injure you and you use, you use insurance one. after i break your leg doesn't mean i didn't break your leg you're right it doesn't mean you're not responsible <laughs> for restitution of some kind right right, right. uh well and there, there's elements here because I, I imagine the conservatives in the audience are going to be hearing wait drug possession like that's they're going to be like wait what what yeah and, and th- there's there's a difference here though like like i am i like the victimless crime of drug possession like i, I think that should be legalized right but there's also a difference of like cleaning up public streets and taking junkies doing heroin off the street in front of mom and pop stores right, right. <laughs> like that, that's a different story and and, and in my oh, mind that's also a, a sense of property violation because yes. you're steering away customers that would otherwise be going to that uh to that store yes. and if these streets and these these public areas weren't public you know one of the problems is that we have a tragedy of the commons situation here where these are public streets and so technically everybody's supposed to be able to you know go on these and and uh and people can kind of do what they want or whatever mm-hmm. as long as they're with in certain rules Mm -hmm. but like if these were if we had like actually secure property rights in these public areas like that type of shit would not be allowed no because it'd be a trespassing and you're imposing an economic cost you you would be evicting those people and it it could also be considered you know like disorderly conduct or disturbing the peace is you know is an act of aggressing against someone in a way of of inhibiting their ability to live you know a trick with that that is disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace are are 
the most classic case and resisting arrest are the most classic case of of where it's so subjective that a police that there's a there's a lot fair. of police abuse cases and i recognize for, that for sure the over the for the abuse of that that's what it's trying to cover is the problem of the tragedy of the commons right it's trying to cover for is when someone's using public property and they're being a dick and how to actually handle that because you're right. making everyone else uncomfortable right you're whipping out and peeing in the public no one wants to see that shit right mm -hmm. and, and and it's hard to uh, hard to write a law for every little thing so what you do is you tend to write a law for that covers a blanket of things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and of course like you know it, it really does come down to the the moral framework of the people enforcing it and in a lot of cases, it's not always the best, uh, right. right? You know, not not every police officer is created equal. And of course, the last thing we want is for the state to be persecuting someone who hasn't already victimized another individual, right? Like, that's the big thing about the victimless crime pieces. Like, there has to be a victim in order for it to be a crime in a libertarian ethos. And in some of these cases, disturbing the peace might just be a guy who's like too drunk in public. And maybe people are a little bit uncomfortable maybe somebody calls it in. I don't know. Maybe not. Right. Maybe an officer just sees him and just arrest him because yeah. he's intoxicated. The, in the other part of this is, is deinstitutionalization, right? So the, why the drug possession thing is in drugs is, a, is such a huge problem in public is because we took all the people with mental illnesses and we threw them out into the streets and we said, good luck. Right. In the 1960s and seventies. And that problem itself is, and then, and then a lot of those people wind up in prison. Right. They, right. So that problem of uh, folks who can't play the social game, wind up in situations where they're not playing the social game and then pay a price when we as a society had them, you know, a, not a perfect way, but maybe a more compassionate way we could deal with those folks, yeah. which would be in, in order to, you know, help them get on their feet and with a more managed care situation. David, I was having a conversation last night uh, with our friend Kendall and it was actually revolving around a lot of these issues. And I was trying to remember the name of the, the, um, the idea of uh, pulling someone back from the bus that's going to drive by and kill them. Right, like like you're you're the trolley, imposing the trolley problem. No, no, no. it's like you're you're pulling them it's off an the implicit curb. contract. That's it. The yeah. the implicit contract. Uh, the implicit can you can you describe contract. that and how, kind of how that applies? To yeah, a case so like this? It, it's 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 just a theoretical case for if you are in a situation in which you as an individual have a reasonable expectation that you would what would prefer to be pulled back from making an error that would be disastrous for your life. So you're going to step off the edge of the curb and a bus is coming and uh you know someone it, it, you would prefer a world where someone held you back and grabbed you and hold you back even though that's a technically an aggression right it's technically a violation of your will to step out into the traffic um but that, that there's an implicit contract in our social order that says that the best kind of per people is the, is the person who would hold you back uh not knowing whether or not you mean to kill yourself but it's going to keep you alive assumption. yeah so that the tomorrow you can can exist in yeah. uh you know perhaps uh defiance of the the, the current you making a a bad decision so yeah they can sue you for your aggression <laughs> yeah and that's just one of those things is what we used to have as a social order that valued life so it, it had a bias towards that person who was going to restrain you from doing that um and what we have now is one that is maybe as such that it doesn't do that, right? It doesn't value life. What it values is, is an abstract concept of justice that says that there is no standard. And that standard that doesn't value life find itself in a situation where it says like, well, this person is, has a broken leg and they live in the street and they're doing drugs to process that pain. Rather than helping them, we're just going to let them just sit there and suffer. Right. Because that's their freedom, right? And it doesn't value their life. It doesn't value anything, their dignity, their self-respect. It just values their freedom. And that's that, that's the... That's the thing. They say that's anti-libertarian. I'm like, no, it's actually the other way around. Libertarian would say, well, you don't actually have ownership here. And the best way to deal with this fact is for you to get help. Yeah. Uh, and right now it's mostly legal to help that person. Yeah. And, and I think the big piece around the, the drug legalization argument is that there needs to be a clinical component to treatment as opposed to a criminal component of incarceration for people who are in the throes of those you know, addictions. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. We need, because we need right. to help people. And mostly because incarcaration of, just doesn't really help with, with the underlying problem. Well, right. right. Cause I mean, you can get drugs in jail. Right. You know, and, and if you go to jail, you're, you're going to learn, you're going to be, you're going to be victimized and abused by other prisoners, uh, which is going to not help your cognitive situation. For sure. Um, any of the other things in here that, that we would, I mean, I would, I would say we could do away with driver's licensing. That would be okay with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for that. I'm actually. down for that. Yeah. I, I just think it should be free. 
Right. I just, sure. I mean, like we pay, you pay <laughs> an enormous amount of taxes really quick. Like this is not related at all, but did you guys see the video of the guy zooming into court for driving with a suspended license while driving? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. That's hilarious. No. That's really funny. <laughs> but like based though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly the, yeah, the, the real challenge. There's, there's, and people people go too far with this point, but I do think there's there's a ridiculousness all the fees and all the, how difficult it is to get in the DMV and do all that kind of stuff. There's there's a stupid amount of bureaucracy there. Um, that's in the nature of government. So if we're going to do it, it should be quick, easy, and efficient. If we're not going to, but you know, if we don't do it at all, I wouldn't shed many tears. Yeah. Bottom line, though, I think is on these things that are going to be decriminalized. Property crimes are not okay, right? Like you can't just yeah. steal from someone. You can't destroy their property. You can't trespass. Like that's someone else's and it's not yours and in order for us to have an orderly society of any kind we need to have like some basic rules and that's a major one non-aggression i think is an important rule right you can't just assault somebody and not have their well, it's, it's also it's it's a useful moral framework Squatter, it, right? maybe <laughs> well and, and <laughs> no no i don't i don't i don't think squatting should be legal but i mean also there no, are other I mean, problems I would, around I would, why i would probably have aggression towards the well, well, yeah, that, they're, that vi- be, they're violating your property. That's rights, right. That right? would be self defense well, because well, they're violating and, and your property. That's actually the important part because, like, I like there's this is a buzzword that's being thrown around. It's non aggression, and people might not actually know what that means in the libertarian ethos. Sure, in the libertarian ethos, that it, it means uh, it, it essentially means the person who is the initial aggressor is the person that's in the wrong. So it's it's not mean it doesn't mean just be pacifist, right. right? It doesn't mean that you can't aggress. It means that the problem is the initiation of the aggression. And right. and if you have to aggress back in order like in a self-defense model, right? Then that's completely okay with right. a libertarian ethos. Correct. Right? Correct. Because like I think somebody that doesn't know the buzzword is probably just be like, oh, you're just a bunch of pacifists. Like you can't, you can't, you know, defend yourself, it. right? Yeah. Like, Far from case, it. Right. Yeah. It's the opposite. Uh, it's a, it's a theory all. on the just use of violence. That's yeah, what right. it is. Right. It just says that the the person who initiates, and this is the one that you grew up with too, the one the the peop, the the person who throws the first punch, that's the bad guy, right? The person who shoves the other person, that's the bad guy. The person yeah. who shows up at the other person's house asking to fight. That's the bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. Each one of those steps are typical, moral, intuitionally true. The trick is, is that when we get to more complex systems, people lose truth, lose sight of the fundamental, right? Yeah. Which is don't hurt people, don't take their stuff. Speaking of hurting people, there was a man who stabbed a bunch of innocent people in <laughs> Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this we're going to get into that next. Broke out big this, uh, this morning. And this is in context to something that what was that? I said I shouldn't have been standing there. <laughs> I was the only one who heard. It was way too quiet. You need to make it louder. Yeah. Uh, uh, so <laughs> this is in a larger context that I think is really important. Uh, we got we blew up on Irish TikTok because of Big Potato. Yeah, Big Potato. Big Potato's pushing us. Yeah, that's right. Um, the the story that happened today about the stabbing, which we'll get to, has kind of like a background that goes for like, you know, it's quite a few years, at least back to 2015, 2013, somewhere in there, uh, of an increasing amount of uh, immigrants from the Middle East and from Africa. Um, and a concern about the rise of those immigrants and the way their culture is treating them, leading to resentment, their politics treating them, leading to resentment, or just straight up resentment out of like a sense of a loss of place and home for the uh, native peoples of these areas. So um, last week, uh, as an example of this, there was a big media freak out over a bunch of Zoomers. Is that the right word? Gen yeah. Z is Gen the Z. appropriate yeah. word. Zoomer, 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 is totally totally Zoomer's the slang. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> uh, singing a very edgy song that you're not supposed to sing or say, and is quite illegal probably to sing and say in Germany. And they did it online and just posted it, you know, balls out. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a banger. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I've been singing it all morning. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been confirm. so obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> I love when the beat drops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just wait wait when the house music starts. This is kind of blown up and gone mean. Yeah. And and what are they singing? They're singing Auslander Ross. There you Did go. That's right? a good impression. Well, well done. Well done. Yeah. He's been yeah. practicing. Which means foreigners get out. Foreigners yeah. well, leave. Well, it's right? a Deutschland for Deutschland, meaning Germans for German, Germans. 
Outlander's out. Yeah. And 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 the edge there is that this is proximal to rhetoric that was said during the Nazi regime, right? Uh, yeah. specifically about people who are in not 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 about immigrants but about the Jewish people in Germany at the time. So this is triggering some major I mean laws and the police uh that the police are actually investing time and resources uh investigating the people who were chanting this song at a German beer festival as was shown there. So uh yeah, yeah. and it's and it's calling it anything Nazi slogan cuz in the sense it is, but it's also like a tautological question of what it means to be a nation called Germany. Uh, and to what degree you're allowed to have a different opinion about this. Um, that isn't the endorsed by the government. I mean, yeah. it's the same with Ireland that we covered like there. It's the born. same thing going on in all these countries, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, just like, don't speak out against it. But you Germany, get assassinated. Mm. Germany doesn't have the same freedom of speech enshrined in their laws like we do here. no countries do no <laughs> countries do. except for right. japan but we force them to have that <laughs> they have it in their constitution but other than that nobody has like a free speech law in order right. to get that you gotta get two bombs right. dropped on you so yeah so, <laughs> yeah. so our hey, i said i'm opposed to it. so so our plan worked <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome we spread freedom mm. and democracy that's actually a point that uh prince made in in his uh, interview with tucker well we'll get to that in members only prince but the artist formerly known as yes, yes. <laughs> Eric Prince. Eric Prince. <laughs> Blackwater. Back. Blackwater guy. So the uh I don't woo. want it now. I don't have to <laughs> melt it like that. <laughs> God damn. Hopefully I'm off camera. Our female <laughs> our female uh subscribers. Huzzah. Cheers, ladies. Good for you guys. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> marking down the time so i can put you on camera <laughs> <laughs> while the police were obviously investigating these terrible young men uh saying such uh vile things to a song a uh a guy a politician was the politician's not quite the right word a rhetorician uh was stabbed by uh a, a, an islamic gentleman uh from the middle east yeah and i, I don't think we're gonna play the video just Why because not? um I thought we were. I thought I was going to do a rolling commentary to it and explain what they did wrong. Uh, well, I mean, guy. do we want to pull the video? Like, it's just somebody gets <laughs> yes. stabbed in the video. Like, I don't think it's good for the for YouTube. Right? I think we skipped the video. Well, you but shouldn't have been can, standing there. Can, can we do the video, Bennett? Can you blur it out? So this this might give you the impression, yeah, yeah. a okay. false impression. Let's, let's, let's do the video. Yeah, Bennett will take care of it okay. in post. We don't actually have it in the notes. I don't think. Well, let's go ahead and find it because I think it's worth doing. Because it, it's it is, right it is so, really man. strange. It's X very live. very weird. Uh, uh, Anti-Islam. Oh, okay, we took a step. Wait, wait. Why didn't it? Was it? Was it this one? Was it the same one? No. Why, why did? Okay, that's weird. I, I I went through all the links and I must have just like skipped that link for some reason. Never mind. Uh, there okay. it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So disregard the the text here because it's not right. The the guy who it was stabbed, Michael, here. is right. But uh, yeah, this wow, is that was a good good pause right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, thank you. It's very potato quality. Four ninety two p. I've never even that seen way. that. <laughs> it is potato quality. <laughs> Why would you? Hey, this Irish is like my that. people. I can say it if I want to. It's uh, my like Andrew Tate, and I'm offended. <laughs> oh, we are frozen as fuck. Yeah, let's 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 take it back. Okay. All right. So this guy here, is I, I, here. Let, let me actually. I'm just gonna mute it. Okay. And then we can yeah. talk yeah. over it. Okay. All right. So do it. the the guy is a anti Islam activist. He's basically saying, "Hey, I don't. I, he's got a problem with Islam." He's okay. No, he's stabbed. not saying that. He's actually flailing around no, stabbing. He was people. saying that. That's and, fine. But for yeah. right now, he's flailing around stabbing people. He's being well, detained. In this case, he's being stabbed by yeah. like bystanders. He still has the knife. Some guy falls to the ground. The cop is trying to to like restrain the guy that fell to the ground. And then the the Islamist like stabs the cop in the neck. Yes, that is the crux of this video. It's very it's very strange. Yeah, so that he was being defended by somebody. Uh, he gets he falls he gets tripped falls over. He gets hit a couple more times. Now the guy on top right here. This is this is what's so strange about. It. You should put your weight on his shoulder. That would have made it a lot harder <laughs> for him to get up. Now, how does he get to to the rear naked choke from there? <laughs> There's no rear naked choke. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, maybe you 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 need to compo- you know Did control that shoulder and, and what, wrist. There's a taser. Taser. Yeah, yeah, they shoot him with the taser. Uh, the guy's the, still alive. The, th- the thing said he got liquidated. <laughs> uh, yeah. It yeah. did say that, that, but that would imply that he German was killed. German police don't carry but, firearms. But he did not um, get shot. Yeah, so like, even the, like, he's got three guys on him, but yeah. you notice that guy with the blue, he gets tackled by the police. Yes. And then the, and then the police get stabbed in the neck from it. It's so crazy. 
it's such a it was such a strange read by the police officer to tackle that guy. I just can't yeah. understand it. What, what, it was what, so, it's what was so clear it? who the aggressor is. Well, I mean, is. I mean, every everything is happening so quickly. Yeah, like, that's you, true. Like th- that, that's always when, when people analyze these things in hindsight, it's like yeah. okay, yeah, we can see what's going on because we can replay it a, a dozen times. So right, right. now it in does the moment, look it's just like, like oh my god, getting, chaos is happening. Right, it does look like that guy's kind of getting abused by the dudes in blue, and yeah. then the cops like, what are you doing? And then it's like, oh shit, actually, yeah. it's this Probably guy twice, honestly, once on the right side of the neck, once once in the once in like the ear, yeah. So anyway we can probably yeah. stop showing this terrible yeah. um so this this is obviously going to be cause du jour for the entire part of that you know side of the right-wing politics of germany and across europe you know as you know someone who criticizes islam a guy comes at him with a knife and tries to stab him to death well and i actually think that this this image right here might be the the best description to kind of get the vibe of so you have the guy on the ground man who had tried to subdue the violent immigrant and then you have the cop is trying to subdue the 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 guy that subdued the immigrant and then now the the immigrant is stabbing the cop who tried to subdue the immigrant. <laughs> right? like, no, subdue the guy who was trying to subdue the immigrant. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which yeah. just, just shows how much of a shit show it is when all these this this chaos types of break it's, out. It's 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 it, it's indicative. It's metaphorical for the state trying to suppress the the people of a country, trying to defend their what they feel is their homeland, while migrants, immigrants, in some form or another, are abusing the state. Right, like that's kind of what this is trying to say. Well, uh, yeah, and so what? What is the what? What are the things that kind of lead to the situation? Like, what is the demographics on this? Because I know when we did the Ireland thing, we we broke down how many Ukrainian refugees had recently entered the country within two years. Right? Mm-hmm. What is the demographic issue that? currently exists like what are the numbers on yeah this? so the i don't have the ukrainian numbers in this case no, I, I don't mean ukrainian yeah, like i'm right. just saying in ireland we, we pointed to the ukrainian and, stuff, and, and a lot what, of what the comments the on our ireland right? one for example it what we're all about the ukrainians aren't the problem it's these other demographics right some of that is uh, right out racism right it's because they're brown that they're, that one's a problem not the other but there's also like oh they are also christian and oh they also share democratic values or whatever right so a lot of that is you know at least in the in the german case there is really two main demographics and it comes into, two, into just two numbers. In 2015, there are 300,000 immigrants in Germany from the Middle East, most of them from Turkey. Um, most of them are on work visa programs within the EU. By today... Like 2013 would be when all the chaos was going down in Turkey too. Right. That could be the, right. uh, all, the, all that. So there's probably a lot of fleeing that happened during that. Exactly. By now, it's 1.5 million. Uh, wow. And, and that's a rough number. There's a lot of illegal immigration. So there's a, some unknowns there and we're sitting about 2% of the population. So is that, it's not an enormous amount of the population in a sense, but it's also like there's, there's, it changes the way that the country feels for a lot of people who are been there since before 2013. Isn't that about what, uh, Ukraine populate like Ukraine into Ireland. Have yeah. And, and Ireland 2%. is having a similar problem with middle Eastern and African immigrants of this sort as well. Um, and the, and the question is, is, is to me, is where are all these refugees coming from? Like, what is the the status of that? Well, where'd we bomb? <laughs> in some ways, it's like, where does the U.S. have foreign influence? And yeah. <laughs> is, there is there is an element of that, probably. Well, and we right? have a clip about that, do you? Yeah, know? yeah. And there's a, there's a clip from, in this case, from Ireland uh, of a immigrant in Ireland being asked, why is he here? And what his response is. Uh, to being in Ireland, why he came. Why are you recording us? I'm just wondering, why are you recording us? Can you answer me a question? No. Why are you recording us? We are not criminal. We are just refugees. We are not criminal. We are not refugees. We lead our country for reason. We lead our country because you fucked it up and we leave my country because I have tough and tough in war for one year. You are not so he's saying we're not criminals or refugees. We left our country because you fucked it up. Right. Yeah. And the interesting thing here, it gets into all kinds of dialogue about like the subconscious, the, the, the feeling of the people in this country that they owe something to these folks for all kinds of reasons, right? Some of it's like in Germany, it's, you know, left over from World War II, or it's um, in England, it's uh, feelings of colonialism and, and resentment on that. As you compare it to like Polish and then Poland, who were straight up, you know, basically militarizing their borders saying, no, we're not going to take 
immigrants from the South. Um, and it was covered and obviously shamed greatly by Western press at the time. Um, if you look at going back to 2021, you know, they, they were hammered by BBC, CNN, all these other places for refusing to do, you know, like what Germany did and what England did that these other countries did and is accepting these refugees. Now, the question is, like, like Bennett got to part of the answer, right? Where do these folks come from? Well, what's never talked about is when he says that you fucked it up, I don't think what he means is Ireland <laughs> messed up Morocco, right? I, or, or, or Ethiopia, or if he was from, you know, Syria, which an uh, no, overwhelming amount of the current immigrants in this case are from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, places like that. Right. So this Yikes. guy was from Libya. So if he's not saying Ireland fucked it up, who is he saying well, fucked it the up? The Western NATO alliance. Yes. Like, and, NATO. And, and obviously we're the biggest, or just like that, the alliance. Because it's not just America that's involved in all these things, right? Like, but we are one of the major players. Right? <laughs> we, 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 we are, we, the, we are the, the yeah, most right. major player. But you also have just like, I, I think it's just like Westerners in general, like that entire alliance block is messing around in all of these countries, right? And it is destabilizing these countries and people are fleeing those countries. It's like they're trying to go somewhere better. Right. Uh, right. And then, so, and that's, I think that's what the guy's getting at. Right. Yeah. And it seems like, I mean, it does at least provide a data point, uh, for the fact that all of the migrants to all these different countries are not created equal. Some of them are going to be worse than others. Some of them are going to be innocent people just looking for a safe place to, to live, to raise a family or to find a job or whatever it is. And we can't just, you know, dismiss them all or, or, or put them all into a singular bucket because that's just that, uh, that that's a collectivist view. Well, imagine right? for a minute, like Hillary Clinton gets it under her craw to overthrow Syria, right? And generates a stupid campaign to do so, probably have something to do with Russia because Russia and Syria have this long relationship for access in the Mediterranean goes way back. And it basically spends decades doing, you know, giving money and guns to Al Qaeda to overthrow this Assad accomplishing nothing hundreds of thousands if not millions of people die the entire country is destroyed ancient cities destroyed and all those people where do they flee to are they gonna flee south you know are they gonna flee towards <laughs> egypt yeah no you're gonna flee north or the richest countries you can find right, right exactly. that can support you yeah because you don't have anything you you're not gonna from, go into the desert yeah you went from doing exactly the you know like some one task one 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 industry probably that you were qualified to do in your in your home country and now you got to go find someplace else to live so you go north you find yourself in your in germany and you know these guys look like the dudes who are dropping bombs on you right and if you're not a if you're not especially subtle thinker and if you think like a collectivist you're gonna say in ireland no you did this to me this is your fault yeah it's your fault that i'm here yeah yeah irish people even though he's he doesn't know the history of ireland probably he probably doesn't know that ireland is a member of nato but doesn't tell america you know <laughs> to go to go screw around in syria uh, or that there's a very small group of people who really you know the elite of the the politics and the industry in all these countries that really right. just tell the populations how it's going to be that the, right. that the individual person on the street isn't the person making decisions and well, so even like this immigrant guy i'm not blaming him right he's he's just responding to a whole set of terrible incentives that were established by the american foreign policy elite. right uh, and so, and that's, and that's a really real tragedy here is like, even as we're talking about the Ireland case and we're getting all this pushback in the comment section, people are like, no one cares what the Yanks think. And I was like, well, I think you guys should care because we're the reason why this happened, <laughs> yeah. right? It was we're our foreign, foreign policy elite who dropped these bombs well, in well, Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, and there's plenty of Irish that were outright messaging us that you guys are completely right about yes. everything that you're talking about True. here. Yeah. Here's more information. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like there was a bunch of that that was a lot going of on too, right? Yeah. And since that happened, we actually got this great video from Uber Boyo on uh, these guys in rural Ireland stopping a caravan of people being transported. Oh, not this one. It's the other one. Um, God, yeah, this one. Uh, it's a little bit low light, uh, but it's, it's, it's of these folks discovered that there was going to be this caravan coming to their small town uh, for another immigration like kind of center to house some of these folks in a, in a rural town. And they oh, all in, got together. Cork? Yeah, this is in Cork, which, oh. which is where a lot of this is going down. Well, that, that's uh, Southern Ireland. Yeah. And to be right, clear, right, that's not necessarily rural. Yeah, no, I mean, a big, it, well, there's, there's County Cork and there's yeah, Cork city. Yeah. Say, we need to it specify. Could, it could be somewhere 
outside of the city but yeah, yeah it's a coastal city in sort of the the southeast but they're tra- but they're trying to stop it from going into their community they, and they stop the actual thing and force them to turn around in the yeah. middle of the night so I go, no look i live less than a mile from here yeah if this comes comes to my area my family are fucking terrified because of what's going on here we know you and again we, 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 know, we know what's going yeah. in here mm. we were told it we, i good conscious cannot stop step off this road right for my family yeah and look, and I, I understand you're doing a job. You're doing a job. Yeah, We're, none of us are here to cause trouble. There's been no aggro, aggro here since this has started. Yeah, okay. We, fair enough. We, we, a lot of us live within a mile, two miles of this place. We all live here, and, and we. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. My, my, my daughter wants. My daughter wants. My, yeah. daughter wants my, my daughter wants to leave home. Hmm. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Do you I mean know. there's a re- there's a reason? Is this is your main outside of us or, or yourselves? You know it, that we don't. I know have any input in what's decided I know, here. but we can't. We we in good conscience. We in good conscience. In. We in good conscience cannot leave that pass. Right. Well, he's struggling to get out at the minute. Oh, he's moving now again. Now, this is them backing out because they refuse to. Daylight move. hours would have been a better option. Yeah, this is definitely County Cork because. Yeah, yeah this is not a Cork spot. City at all. Yeah, this is not a city. But this totally looks like all the roads in England and Scotland and yeah. Ireland. I guess <laughs> the rural. rural I mean, spot. this is worse than most. So, so very very rural. Yes. A good a good example of like this this kind of bottom up resistance to this thing for people's like small domestic communities that they're trying to protect from what they feel like is being forced on them by their own governments that they yeah. pay for to move these people in and then house them in in their communities. It's an invasion. Well, and, yeah, it, here, and here's a Uber Boyo's statement on on top of it. Uh, in the middle of the night, the regime tried to sneak in a busload of immigrants into a small country estate. The locals heard the plan and confronted the guards. The guardy, isn't that what they call them there? Yeah. The guardy. Yes. Uh, again, the police real uh, real. What was that word? Realized. Re- realized. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. With an S, <laughs> like the somebody British. spell it in Ireland. Okay. <laughs> I was like, Steph, you're confusing me. Uh, again, the police realized they were betraying their people and the aba- and the abandoned and they abandoned the project. Relentless pressure works. Yeah. And, that, and that's and that, it, so it shows like the, the the young men singing this what they mean is this right when they're singing that very edgy song well we hope. outlanders out we yeah hope. right we they're hope. not they're not meaning a, a global conspiracy of jews i don't think right I, I wouldn't suspect that what i suspect is it's mostly hey there's folks from syria who i've been accused of gang rape but we don't like that they're not talking about some global conspiracy they're, they're talking about what's actually happening in their communities yeah and that's and that's the difficulty of uh, speech laws of this sort, right? Is you can as soon as you could try to articulate something that's not within the narrow dimensions of what's currently legal in Germany, you get the police coming after you, and you know the problems of that. Yeah, um, and I do want to address one thing: uh, the question of men immigrants. Uh, there is an important thing to know, even in the case of almost all immigrants. Period. Almost all the time are men in their twenties. Right, economic immigrants, refugee immigrants, almost always men in their twenties. Why? Um, high risk tolerance, probably. High risk <laughs> There's tolerance. probably a lot of that yeah. personality it's, traits. It's that. It's it's like how robust are you physically to be able to make the trek? It's. Um, are you tied down? You know, like a hunt. There's just a thousand reasons why. Almost all immigrants in all statistical groups uh, over all time, American immigrants to like people immigrating to America, almost all the first generation of any family are almost all 20 year old men and then come children and women. Yeah, it's like and so the, first they're sending back, they're working yeah. and they're sending back money to try to fund the, the transit yes, for family. Almost always. They're, right. they're like setting roots essentially mm-hmm. so that they can get an established, I don't know, life, I guess. And then when the rest of their family joins, they don't have to go through that hardship. And right. oftentimes it's also actually sending money back to the family yeah, as correct. well. So like, cause I, I know that was a big deal when uh, Bukele, Bukele in El Salvador opened up re- remittances and also with the Bitcoin stuff was that they could go around all the extra fees in order for uh, El Salvadorian uh, workers to come in here and work in America and then send money back to the family right? mm, more efficiently without the yeah. enormous fees that a Western yeah, union yeah. would actually Just charge. Spend a small gas fee in crypto, basically, right? Yeah. 
uh, which is huge for BTC because the fees are terrible <laughs> <in> BTC. <laughs> BSV would be a much better option. But, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> you can just put a layer two and it'll be fractional of a penny. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but it won't the, be secured by the uh, We don't have to fight about this right now. Come on, guys. <laughs> but but the, the, overall, the overall point there is like, <laughs> is that you have people that are also sending money back right. as well, right? Well, and, that, and, that, and that like, okay, immigrant refugee thing, that's, that's very much dependent upon someone coming to the host country working and then sending money back as opposed to what we what, what a lot of these folks are complaining about is a social safety net and a yep. in a labor market that forbids them from doing this from doing that if you go to the netherlands for example and this has been one of the big arguments about the netherlands and their treatments or france i'm not sure to what degree it applies to germany that the labor uh, labor power is so strong there that pretty much unless you were born in these areas, it's very difficult to find a job, right? Yeah. And so unless you have a more American style anti-labor labor market, it's very difficult to ingest new immigrants because those immigrants can't get jobs in these other places because you have to have the government certificate of approval as sponsored by the labor union. So one of the tricks here is the degree to, and I think this is underestimated by people in Europe and as the American looking at your situation, just trying to diagnose it the best I can, what I see is if you loosen your labor markets and then tighten your borders, you'll be in a much better circumstance across almost all barriers there. And then additionally, that a more um, uh, when you immigrant, it's, 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 it's for a job versus for you know, compassion. Interesting. I want to I just system. circle back to what you just said about uh, loosening your labor market and tightening your borders. Yeah. Why, why does that create a better circumstance? Because that means if you are there, right, and you don't have a way to get home and a return, you know, plan, or if you don't want to pay the gazillions of dollars to round up people and ship them out, which is itself expensive and dangerous and a terrible look on the world stage, loosening your labor markets means that those people then become productive members of the society when they otherwise might not. And so then they're just living on welfare and, and so you make it easier for them to, to get jobs. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, when you say tightening the borders, you mean making it harder for new immigrants to come in? Yeah, especially. Well, at least ending a very loose refugee program that basically takes in anyone who applies. Okay, so not as easy for illegal immigrants maybe. Well, it's to legal to... Re, re, refugees are not illegal immigrants. Sure. Well, they're seeking asylum in some form or another. Right. 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 So the, the, this refugee program across Europe is the, is the key problem, right? There, and some of it... Some of it is European birth rates. Some of it, they do actually have labor demand shortages that are problems. Um, but they also have huge labor union power in their, in their countries that keep them from being able to actually expand labor supply mm. in all kinds of ways. And they create exceptions, rules. I've read some stuff about the exceptions of labor markets. Brookings Institute has some interesting write-ups about this. I got very interested in this topic because we got all these negative comments. Uh, trying to make sure I had my mind right about it. And what I see, and I, I still see this, and I'm, I'm curious what, what the countervailing evidence is, is it really still appears to be that, that like labor union power in these state countries are making it very difficult for even the best and well-intended immigrants to find jobs, maintain jobs, and, and, and provide for themselves. Which is very interesting because there's, there's a double-edged sword here. One, you've got immigrants coming in who may be willing to work for less because mm. they're more desperate, right? right? They don't yet have all of the living expenses of, of living in this country, uh, per se. Maybe they're being subsidized in some way or another. So you're undercutting local labor right. to a degree. But also, if you don't give them a job, then you're incentivizing them in a way, uh, perversely, to be more criminal in a sense. Right. If they if they can't get a job, they have to find a way to survive. They have to steal maybe, or they, they also, find themselves more- decriminalize those things. They, they find themselves more incentivized to do things that are not legitimate. <laughs> Additionally, that the, the, the labor effect markets, you want to avoid the lump labor fallacy, right? Which assumes that a native, a native German speaker has the same marketability and employment, even though they ha they're both welders, right? You have a German welder and a Syrian welder. The German welder has every advantage in the labor market. In they Germany. Because they can speak German, right? Sure. Um, and they also because they know the cultural customs. It's, it goes way beyond that. They have fundamentally different sets of skills. Sure. Uh, even though they're both welders, right? In this case, you know, you, you don't want to assume that the Syrian that comes in is necessarily decreasing their, their ability to be paid. Um, well, or is decreasing their wage because they have fundamentally different skills, fundamentally different signals in the labor market, and they're going to be changed. Okay, so you're and that, saying and that, that a lot of the uh, post hoc evidence suggests that as well. Okay, so you're saying that just because adding one welder to to a labor market increases the supply of welders relative to demand potentially, that doesn't necessarily directly relate to a decrease in the the value of that labor, the price of that labor 
because those two welders are not equal. Yes. Because okay. there's a, other it's, intangibles that exist. It's the lump there. labor fallacy. It just treats all labor like it's one big thing that's all the same. It's but just there, not, it's but just yeah, not. but there are intangibles, like you say, that, that make them unequal. Yeah. And, and, well, and one of the easiest ones that they've mentioned this is just, do you know the language? <laughs> like yeah. it's much easier to work with somebody if you have a shared language, right? right. For sure. For um, sure. And another element too here is uh, I think because a lot of the, a lot of these policy changes that seem necessary to be, to be able to fix these problems, they're not going to happen unless the actual moral fabric of the society changes in some way. Cause right now, and this is a, another tweet from Uber Boyo here and he's, you know, on the more the Irish end, but I think this applies broadly speaking across Europe right now. And also a lot in America is that there's kind of a shadow in the European psyche, which is their inability to confront and absolve guilt with, uh, for colonialism. They abandon Christianity, which would uh, stabilize the psyche and stop this insanity. And they're projecting this angelic idealism onto dark foreigners. And that a lot of that is just kind of like the, a lot of the, the wokeness that we see in this, in our society too, where they're trying to kind of elevate the people that we've wronged for past uh, aggressions that might have gone on, you know, back during the British empire or back during whatever. And that we're, we're trying to elevate the, 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 the poor lesser people, you know, like in their minds, right? The poor lesser people that we've wronged in the past and we're trying to make, we're trying to make amends for that, you know, in the same way that in our country, like reparations for slavery and all, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff, right? Sure. Um, and as long as that is kind of seeped into the psyche of the European mindset, you know, policies aren't going to change because the, the policies are always going to reflect where the psyche exists and, and the people that we need to help, right? So actually elevating Irish people or Germans or whatever, that's not going to be part of the, uh, the framework. Because yeah. that's racist. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that comes from that fundamental, like seeing the world in terms of oppressors oppressed, yeah. uh, seeing that as the only useful moral matrice is oppressor oppressor or colonial versus non-colonial. And that's where it's very strange, especially in the Irish case. Like, like the other ones, you can make the case, okay, fine, if you're going to embrace those values. But it makes zero sense in Ireland. There are the colonized. Oh, for sure. Right. And we got people in the comment section be like, how racist of you to assume that these people are like, this is like, what are we doing? Have here? you read history? <laughs> well, 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 that's the thing. They're like, white. Yeah, I know that's, <laughs> that's it's, racist. Yeah. Uh, that like literally. Well, that, that's my understanding of the kind of the, the Irish psyche around this stuff is over the last few decades, uh, they were, they kind of got on board collectively as like the Irish with the more neoliberal, like we're going to, uh, we're going to kind of take on this of like the, the, those that were colonialized, they're going to get reparations. And the Irish are like, we were colonialized. <laughs> we, we should get reparations. Over here. And then they're like, no, you got privilege. You're white. <laughs> like, and then they're like, wait, what? <laughs> oh. They kind of flipped on them a little bit, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, a little bit. Oh. So I'm curious. Uh, so his second point here, abandoned Christianity which would stabilize the psyche and stop the insanity. This is part of the shadow of the, the European psyche. How would reincorporating Christianity stabilize the psyche and stop the insanity? What's the picture there? I think the idea is there, there's like a common moral framework, right? Like, and th this is a, Uber Boy is a Nietzschean YouTuber, right? Slash Jungian. This is kind of a Jungian take, but uh, the, the general premise of Nietzsche's, uh, God is dead statement that everybody kind of thinks that he was like claiming some sort of moral victory, but that's just people not understanding what Nietzsche was actually saying and just completely misrepresenting it is that one of the biggest problems of the West is that we abandoned our collective principles that kind of binded us all together and, and we killed him. It was like, it was kind of like the investigatory, uh, like, a framework that comes out through like the Renaissance period period that he thinks actually stems coming out of Christianity. Cause there's like kind of this deep, like knowledge gaining knowledge seeking part of us ended up being what killed God in a sense in our moral framework. And then that is going to have downstream effects that like degrades the moral fabric of society. Um, and that, that's kind of what he's getting at there is, is our moral framework is now kind of, uh, shifted towards this very, uh, you know, like in our modern terms, it'd be like kind of the woke, but kind of this resentment ideology or elevating the victims and kind of uh, praising weakness rather than praising like the, the strong values that make a civilization work, mm -hmm. you know, those types of things. Mm -hmm. And and now we no longer have these collective values that we all, we all kind of agree upon because there, there's in society, it's not just laws that make society run, right? It's kind of like there's, there's norms that exist and we all kind of know like, 
don't cut somebody off in line. Don't, you know, right. And we all kind of have these shared values that we, that are kind of unspoken rules. And when we got rid of our common religious principles, we started to kind of like, now this person believes that this person believes that this, and, and nobody's really meshing with each other anymore. Right. right. There's not a common framework for what makes a person good as a member of a community. Yeah. Right. And that, and that's like the same as the case going on in Boston, that same degradation of the fundamental question of what is a good member of society and well, how do you define that? Be like, well, you don't know. You don't know that that person who's shitting in the street and, you know, full of holes and hepatitis B uh, isn't a good person. You have a j- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Guys, anytime we get banned in the future, it's going to be blamed on Bennett. I'm just going to put that up there right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, how dare you judge that person? That person's a victim. Therefore, they're ennobled and things like that. And that's actually, in a sense, too, a Christian moral yeah. ethos, right? That that person's been victimized society. The the good, noble person is the person who is the sacrifice of the collective for the good of everybody, right? Um, so that that idea, that victim is the first and prioritized moral standard, not the person who isn't adding to the social welfare, well, well, and that's part of like uh, Nietzsche would say that there was a slave morality that kind of seeped in with Christianity, and it's not necessarily Jesus. It's a lot, a lot of like the post Christianity, like the post Jesus Christianity that developed over two thousand years, and there became a lot of this like elevation of the weak that came from it. But then after we kind of just decided like, no, God's not real. Atheism rules, kind of stuff. It like it just everything started to just run rampant because we still kind of had that thing, but it wasn't like contained anymore, and right. it just kind of exploded. Right. right. So you get the benefit of like we're no longer guilty about sex and things like that so now we can appreciate aesthetics right we can we can say oh yeah build bodybuilding awesome cool right we can appreciate vitality in a lot, a lot of dimensions but we have like we have to feel really guilty about it because we've retained the moral values that said there's something really wrong with being strong and being like strongness doesn't mean goodness in fact it actually may it probably means you're suspect because well, that's well, what a slave morality informs you well, well, well hmm. think, think about that in the sense of there's all the articles that are like uh, Jim bro nature is rooted in the alt right. Yeah. Right. Like right. that is uh, that, that is a, uh, we're not going to celebrate the strong. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to hate the strong and venerate the weak. Mm. Right. Because, well, they just don't have the privilege of being able to go to the right. Gym, you know? <laughs> they can't afford it or they don't have the time yeah, yeah. or, yeah, which right. is ridiculous. Cause if you ever look at bodybuilders from Africa, those guys are fucking <laughs> huge dudes who do crazy workouts with very little more equipment. And then lastly, uh, projecting angelic and idealism into dark foreigners. That's just another part of like the white guilt phenomena. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and is very predictable amongst, I think a, 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 an American audience can totally identify and understand that. Yep. It's crazy to me that they would feel that way in Europe at this juncture or, or that Gen Zoomer should feel, at what point do we give up the moral guilt? That's a question. Like that's just yeah. the undermining of a question. And I actually mentioned the story. There's, there's a closer distance between Joe Biden's generation and slavery than there's from Zoomers to world war two. True. So when you think about that for a minute, you will quickly find like, well, <laughs> How much should these Zoomers therefore be bound by the conceptions and like the, the taboos of, you know, the World War II generation? Forever. Yeah, well, that's, if you if you think that, then you believe in blood guilt. And I don't believe in blood guilt. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. Don't, don't get us started on blood Don't, blo- get, on, us wait, don't get us started on blood libel. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of uh, libel. the race thing, they're going back to Boston. Boston activists seeking $15 billion in reparations call on white churches to commit to extending wealth, and that's for, like, repaying for, like, slavery and stuff like that. Mm. $15 billion in damages? Yeah. Whoa. Dang. Irish, are you hearing this? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> rise up. Big potato, rise up. <laughs> Boston, big Irish hub. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> but they're now getting blamed. <laughs> That is wild. Uh, Even though they're also oppressed. Not Boston, the Irish. Well, you know what? I think I think I'm going to say this is a good place to end. We have to go to our members only show. We have a couple of topics to cover uh, with you guys. For those of you who are supporting the show, we we so much appreciate you. We're gonna we're gonna stop here and we're gonna go to our exclusive show. We're gonna talk about Ari Shafir, uh, his appearance on Howie Mandel, uh, as well as Mike uh, Mike Benz. Uh, and a variety of other things. So thank you guys. Mike, Mike Benz wants you to 
co- collectively bring your spirit energy together for the spirit bomb for Trump. That's it's, right. <laughs> and he's going to instruct on the T pose, which is uh, very, very important. So, uh, oh, and then, yeah, then they are print story too with the, uh, right with the uh um leaked text messages with all these uh gop big wigs just crazy it's but pretty interesting we're gonna get into that stuff thank you guys so much for tuning in this has been uh episode number 80 80 of the human reaction podcast guys congratulations <laughs> to a thousand subscribers on youtube thousand we appreciate you yeah. for joining us and please tell your friends if you're enjoying yourself if you feel like you're a part of this community we we love to have you come join us in the discord share this with your friends uh like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. David Rand, Kyle Mack, Bennett. My name is Joe Sheehan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Human Reaction. Please be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and give us a review on your podcast platform of choice. And if you want to become a member and support the show financially, check out humanreactionpod.com. And remember... You're singing it in your head, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> 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 oh,